Hi, I'm Pastor Brian Coffey, and I want to welcome you to week one of Life Together. Today we're talking about community. I want to begin with two quick stories from my own life. I grew up in the church. I gave my heart to Jesus when I was eight years old. I was baptized when I was 12. And for the first 18 years of my life, I could count on one hand the number of Sundays I was not in church. But when I went to college, that changed. I stopped going to church. Maybe you can relate to that. It was hard to find a church like the one I grew up in. None of my friends went to church. It was hard to find a ride on Sunday morning. And I was probably a bit lazy. But I did find my way into a small prayer cell that was part of an on-campus ministry. And for most of those four years, I joined that little group every Thursday night. There were five or six other students in the group. They weren't people I knew very well. I didn't hang out with them on campus. But we had one thing in common. We shared the language of prayer. And looking back, I think it was that single thread, a Thursday night prayer group that held my faith together during my college years. The second story happened after I graduated and went to Europe to play and coach basketball in Geneva, Switzerland. I was 22 years old, living alone in a foreign country, unsure of the direction of my life. And for the first time in my life, I realized that I needed a church family. So I found a small English-speaking Baptist church. The pastor was British. Most of the congregation was made up of English speakers from around the world, British, Australian, South African, Canadian. I was one of the only Americans there. I soon discovered that a Scottish couple in the church, Douglas and Fiona Marr, I still remember them, made it their ministry to invite anyone who was not living with family at the time to come to their home for dinner after church on Sundays. They would have a great home-cooked meal prepared, and we would all eat together around this large table, sometimes 12 or 14 of us. After dinner, we'd often take a walk in the countryside and then come back for tea and biscuits late in the afternoon in their home. And something happened to me on those long Sunday afternoons. I learned that church was about more than just Sunday morning services. And I learned something about God's purpose for my own life. And I believe those Sunday afternoons around the Mars table played a role in my call to pastoral ministry, which I experienced during my time in Switzerland. So looking back, those two experiences, my college prayer cell and the Mars Sunday dinners, taught me a great deal about the church and a great deal about myself. I learned the value of community. I learned that even though I'm fundamentally an introvert, I do need community. I need to gather with other believers to pray and be prayed for, for spiritual conversation, for fellowship around the table. I need community to survive and to grow spiritually. So that's why I'm glad you've chosen to be part of a life group. We believe that life groups are one of the most helpful and important things you can do to experience grace, grow in faith, and make an impact where you are. So why does community matter? The Bible tells us we were created for relationships by a relational God. And the church is built on relationships, first on our personal relationship with Christ, but also on our relationships with others in the church. Acts chapter 2 tells us that the early believers were devoted to fellowship, that great Greek word koinonia, which simply means the sharing of life together, which is why we call our groups life groups. Koinonia just means that the Christian life is not meant to be lived in isolation. Now, how is this kind of community formed? We all know that relationships are built over time. And community is the same way. Community is built intentionally over time, which means making your life group a priority. And that's always a challenge because there's always going to be something competing for your time. I just want to encourage you to work at it. Make your life group a priority on your calendar. And if you have younger children, for example, consider sharing babysitting resources. It also means you have to be patient because community isn't built in just one meeting, but week after week, month after month, slowly but surely, you'll get to know and trust each other at the heart level. And that's when community happens. So what do we do in our life groups? Again, in Acts 2, it says, they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. So simple. They met in homes, they shared meals, and they had glad and sincere hearts. In the group my wife and I are in, we take turns hosting the group in our homes and we always share food around a table. But we share more than that. We share our lives and stories, marriage, kids, jobs, hobbies. We talk about what we see God doing in our lives. We pray for and with each other. And we have fun. Every few months we try to do something fun together. We've taken electric bike rides, we've played mini golf, we've gone to an outdoor concert, and we laugh together. 
In fact, we laugh a lot. So, welcome to your life group. I hope your group will, over time, become a place where you are known and loved, a place where you can pray, learn, and grow together. And that's what you're going to be talking about in the remainder of your time together as you enter into your group discussion. Thanks for watching for being part of the Chapel Street Church family.